Hello, Krupa Clever 1972 here with another video. As I promised tonight, I do another try to catch up on my uh, movie, uh, movie watching for the Halloween marathon, you know, film each day this month. Um, so, um, as far as tomorrow goes, that'll be day 14. And I go to a film festival. Maybe I'll go this Wednesday. It's always Wednesday. It's it's a weekly festival um, at the town I used to live in, and and um, it's in a it's a, it's at a, like a small theater, uh, you know, arts in, arts independent theater, independent films, foreign movies, you know, um, that kind of a thing, art house theater, you know, um, and um, but anyways. I subscribe to a streaming service called Mubi, M-U-B-I, and uh, two of the uh, films I want to watch are, well, actually, three of them um, are all going to expire by, well, one's going to expire tomorrow, which, well, it's directed by Shohei Imamura, but I can't remember the title of it. It's like late, is it, it's, I th I think it's late seventies or early eighties. Maybe it's later than that. Maybe it's, I think it might be later than early eighties. Um, so I want to watch that. And then there's one expiring on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. The Wednesday one is another Japanese movie. Um, I can't remember the title, but it looks pretty interesting. It came from, from the, the, that particular Japanese film was made I think the 60s, I don't think it was the 50s, but it looks cool, the, the photo, what it has to say on it. And uh, the, the one that comes before that on Tuesday, that expires on Tuesday, um, I can't remember what country or, or director or whatever, but it looked, in, looked um, enticing to me, so I want to watch that too. So what I might do is tomorrow I might try and watch all three of those and then catch up yet again, you know, piggyback my... Halloween film to the next day, which would be a Monday, and watch two films on Monday, two Halloween movies on Monday. So I guess it's kind of hectic. I mean, I'm reading a book on, on Japan, and I'm about halfway through, or maybe a little more than halfway through. It's like a 600-something page book. I'm somewhere in page like 300-something, um, maybe 320s or something. I'm in the 300s, I know that. But... Um, yeah, that's that has to be done, and you know these movie films, and I got the the marathon a few a few weeks from now, and uh, you know the Jacob Birds Film Center. Um, so I have a lot on my plate, I guess you could say, to watch, and um, I haven't I haven't been doing any music, I haven't been uh, composing any garage band songs because I just time doesn't seem to be. Uh, available to do everything and I I try to do my garage band songs earlier at, at night because I, I don't want to disturb anybody because you know I'm using an electric guitar and I got it set up to, plugged into an amp and you know um, I'm not playing it very loud volume but it's loud enough you know what I mean so um, yeah so, so that's why I, if you want to check out some garage bands as long as there's some up there up, up on my channel already. I'll put up another notice towards the end of this video and you can just just so you know that, you know, check out my garage band videos and I'll I'll put up a notice for my blog. I usually mention that that, that at the end of my um, video, but I'll just put it up. I I probably won't say anything about the garage band videos or the blog. I'll just I'll just put them up here on the screen towards the end of the video. And you, you know, if you want, you can take a look, see what you think. Um, so, anyways, enough of that. Um, here's day thirteen. Technically, it's fourteenth day, uh, but it's day thirteen for this countdown. Um, and it's three twenty-nine in the morning right now on Sunday. Um, so, anyways, I finished this. I watched some of the special features because. I'm not watching all the special features on all these movies, you know, because um, I, the, it's time-consuming, but yet um, 
Well, I mean, like, like for example, I watched Hostel, and there's four commentaries on that. I think each one has Eli Roth on them. But And I'd like to listen to the commentaries, but I've got to make, you know, room for the other films that are coming up. I've got to make room for other issues or whatever. And maybe I'll, I'll, I'll backtrack after this Halloween marathon and maybe watch some of the special features of these movies. I'm not, I'm not quite sure on every, all of it. Um, I still haven't watched some of the special features from the uh, Ryan Chataway 24-hour movie marathon. Okay, so this is Phantom Carriage. This is a film I watched tonight. It's from 1921. It's a Swedish film directed by Victor um, Sostrom. I thought it was Seastrom, but... Then uh, Peter Cowie on the special features, he said Sostrom. So it's Sostrom. I thought it's Seastrom. Um, this is about a death comes on this um, carriage. And at the stroke of, of midnight of every year, he pick, whoever dies at that particular moment is responsible for carrying all the dead souls in the carriage every year before another person dies at the stroke of midnight, and then they take the place of that. Um, it was, and and it, this film had a profound impact on uh, Ingmar Bergman. Um, I think Ingmar Bergman said this is his favorite movie, if I remember the special features on here. And Charlie Chaplin said it's his favorite movie. Um, now, I can't remember who it was. It was somebody, maybe it was Ingmar Bergman that had seen this film like 20, 50 times or something like that. 20, 50 times, maybe. I don't know. It, it says so on the special features. I think it was Bergman, and I think he had seen it something, something like 50 times or something like that. I think there's another director that really liked this film a lot, and I just it flew by my head. I can't remember who it was. So I think there are three, at least three big directors that love this movie. And, of course, two of them I, that I, I just said were, were Chaplin and, of course, Bergman. Who, Bergman would later have uh, Victor Sostrom in at least two of his movies. Um, one of his early films, To Joy, which I never heard of until today. Well, maybe I had, you know, I, I read a book on Ingmar Bergman a while back. I think I own it now because I think the library got rid of it. Um, and I work at the library where it, where it is. And I I can't remember if it's still there or not. Or, or if they were getting rid of it and I picked it up. I can't remember. But um, anyways, um, there might have been mentioned, oh, you know what? I do have another, I, I, I do have a Bergman movie, not a Bergman movie, a Bergman book. I think it's called Images. I think Death from Seven Seals on the cover of the, the of the book. I I have read some of it. I haven't read all of it. I wish I could say that some of these uh, film books that I've read, I, I've read all the way through, but that's just not the case. And that, and that's like an autobiography written by um, Bergman himself. Sort of like another book. I know I'm trailing and digressing and everything, but it reminds me of another book by another director called Something Like an Autobiography by Akira Kurosawa, which tells, which is maybe it's a diary or a journal of Kurosawa's, and then it stops at about the time of um, which film was it? Ikiru or um, Rashomon? It was an early film, so it doesn't go up into up into movies like Seven Samurai and you know Jimbo and Ron and all that stuff. You know, it doesn't doesn't delve into those films. Um, just so I let you know that title. Um, so, what did I think of this movie? Well, well, you know, on second thought, let me show you some films by Bergman that, um, well. First of all, Seven Seal. This is one of the two I'm going to show you. Uh, Seven Seal is about death. Who? It's set during the bubonic plague in Europe, the great, um, the Black Death, or the Great Plague, or whatever. In the when was it, the medieval era, um, 1300s, I think it was, when the bubonic plague struck Europe, and <clears throat> so so. Death and his squad, I mean not death, um, 
Johan Block, I think his name is, played by Mick, Max von Sydow, and a squire played by Gunnar Bjornstand. They've they've been fighting in the Crusades, you know, in the Middle East. They're coming back to Sweden, and um, at the very start of the film, Death is about to take um, the knight played by Max von Sydow under his mantle. You know, right? You know, take him to from life to death, and um, um, death is played by Bang Ektorok, and it's sort of a interesting um, way death is presented because it's not not a skull or like a today that has CGI or something. It's it's sort of similar to the death in this movie, Phantom Carriage. It's a, it has. It's a little more true to like the skull kind of death appearance, but it's it's a guy's face, Bang Ankh Rock, kind of, kind of uh, powdered white, you know. So, um, but anyway, so so the knight says to him, "I hear you play chess because he's seen pictures of knight death playing chess," and he says, um, "Let's play chess." And he says, if you win, you, you claim I saw. If, if I win, I get eternal life. And Death says, okay, let's do it. You know, so that's what, but, but there are other characters in this film. Um, you know, there's a, a husband and wife with a son, a baby boy son. Uh, and they're part of a theater troupe with another guy. And they're, in this film, they show people dying and, and how they, how they got, um, how they die, and death appearing at various, uh, um, various uh, parts of the movie. Um, some of it's kind of humorous in a way, I guess you could say, like when um, the other actor that's part of their theater troupe is 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 in a tree, and he hears workmen in the forest, what he thinks are workmen in the forest. Then he looks down and he sees death is sawing the tree. I don't want to give that give too much of the Seven Seal away, and I'm not really talking about Seven Seal. I'm talking about Phantom Carriage, but I'm just trying to say, you know. And at the end of this movie, well, no, I shouldn't say the end because that spoiled the whole movie. But at the end, I'll just say this: the end sort of reflects some some of the Phantom Carriage. So, and then we have another film. That actually star actually stars Victor Sostrom himself as an actor, and he also acted in some of his own movies, by the way. Um, and he um, so, anyways, I guess according to these special features on, on *Phantom Carriage* that I watched, um, they met in the '40s. I think Victor C Sostrom was a uh, influencer for Bergman to. Like when Bergman, I guess, was being kind of um, aggressive, you know, with other people. Victor Sostrom, like, gave him some breathing room, you know, helped him helped him succeed, you know, where others might have failed. Um, and um, so they filmed Wild Strawberries, and uh, he Bergman said he was punctual and he knew all his lines and everything, and. He came on set at 9 a.m., but he wanted to leave right at 5 p.m. because he wanted to have his drink of whiskey or Scott. I think it was whiskey. And, and um, um, what was I going to say? Um, but anyways, he's the director of Phantom Carriage. This is his last film. He was 78 when he made Wild Strawberries for, for Ingmar Bergman. Um both of these films, Seven Seal, this is a five-star film, and Wild Strawberries, um, well, at least four and a half, maybe five. Four and a half, definitely, maybe five. I, 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 do, I like this movie. I might like Seven Seal more. My personal favorite is Bergman's is a shame. I know, I'm still digressing. Um, going back to Phantom Carriage, um, so anyways, the main character of this film, 
he um he almost well does he he almost comes to well no i shouldn't say that he he lives a life of like debauchery he, if that's the right word i'm looking for he gets drunk he's not faithful to his wife i don't know if he sleeps with any other woman i'm not quite sure on that um he's gets he gets drunk he's not good with his children as his wife and um he, he hears about the story about the phantom carriage which i just told you like that that death can't come to claim a, somebody at the stroke of midnight a person is chosen who is dead to carry all the souls of each year until the next stroke of midnight the following year um and then when that person is the next person to die at the stroke of midnight the following year, they have to take over the responsibility of carrying the souls of the dead for a year. Um, so one of the the uh, characters in this film, he finds, he, he tells his tale and then he finds himself dead. And um, he has to rethink about, what he's done in his life and whether it's been um, a prudent, a, 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 um, whether he was, he did the right thing in his life, whether he acted the right way because there was consequences for his actions that might not just affect him, but affect other people as well. Like his brother is in prison and um, I think he's serving a life sentence, but the, the warden is saying to him, you influence his life, so maybe you'd like to take his life sentence and, and let him free. Um, and um, his wife has fled his town and doesn't want him to find it, find him, find her, and his and his children and her children. So you know he has to come. He has to he has to examine himself and see uh, if he can strain things out. Um, there's this. Maybe they're nuns, they're, they're nurses. Yeah, I think they're nuns slash nurses. There's this woman, she wants, she's like saving souls. It sort of reminds me of the temperance movement in America, you know, the um, the banning, the starting of prohibition, you know, on the woman's right to vote kind of thing. Um, the, these, the, the, they're sort of like the temperance woman, uh, the, these Red Cross nurses in Sweden, you know, they're trying to get these men reformed and not be sinners. And um, she wants them to get it. This Red Cross nurse wants to to have, uh, oh, what's the character's name? I can't remember. The main character anyways, she wants him to get back with her, with his wife, make things right so he can have a clear conscience before he dies, you know. And and she gets on her deathbed. She says, before I die, I want to have this resolved so I can have a clean conscience, even though she's done nothing bad herself. Um, sort of, you know, that sort of reminds me of another movie called Tokyo Story by Yasujiro Ozu. And there's an actress who's in the movie. Her name, her her her. her her name is it's Satsuka Hara. Um, that's her real name. Her character is the in the film is the daughter-in-law of an elderly uh, husband and wife, and their son, who she was married to, has passed away, and she uh, bends over backwards to be helpful to them while her other adult children, while their other adult children have like n want nothing to do with their elderly parents. So how does that relate? Um, oh yeah. It, it, it relates in this, in the fact that this, this non nurse or whatever she is wants to men fit. She wants this man. She's trying to help um, to, to, men fences with her um with his uh wife and children so she can feel like she's done something meaningful in her life i guess you could put it um 
So I guess I'll leave it there. I think it's a pretty good movie. Um, you, you really have to stay with it. You know, I, um, I don't know if everyone's going to like this. I, well, I guess they will. I, I don't know. Um, I, mean, I, I don't know if... I don't know if some viewers might find this boring and others not. Um, I think you got to give it a chance and just keep watching it. I, I think it's a pretty good movie. I'm going to give it, um, let's see. Um, I might give it, I guess, four stars. So I think this is an excellent movie, but it's not my top excellent movie. It's it's better than a good movie, but not a top excellent movie. But it is an excellent movie. So I'm going to give it, I think I'll give it four stars out of five. So that's it. Um, so be on the lookout again tomorrow. Um, I may or may not put a Halloween video up. I may wait for Monday. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, get through all these. This is a long video I, I, I've, I've done on the, on this particular Halloween video. I see I'm at 21 minutes now, but, um, I don't know. It's probably the fact because, you know, Sostrom was involved with Bergman and then I showed you those two Bergman movies and then I digressed with all these other films and directors and whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm going to shut up now. Um, thanks for watching. Um, it's real late now. It's like 3.46 in the morning. So this will take, this might take a little while to get up on YouTube, but I'm, I'm going to try to get up, get it up there right now. Um, all right, I'll, I'll see you soon. Watch some scary movies.